My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 6,465 kilometres so far and I've got 10,135 left to go. So far on the mission, I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits, and in this episode, we visit the pygmy people, meet an American, here in Texas, I get food poisoning, if I feel myself, I feel myself, and the police take me away. So You're excited to uh, destroy the road network of a new country? Yeah. Republic of Congo is just a pile of dust at this point. It is really, is shame. Sham. I read a report the other day. Yeah, go on. That all of the concrete dust from the roads, yeah. the gorillas have been breathing it in. And they've just gone extinct in Congo. Shame for them, innit? What time is it? 7.30. What have you been doing for the last 45 minutes? Variety of things. I thought you were just having one single massage session on the bed. Did have quite a long massage session. Actually, I did wake up, get to the van, drop my stuff, walk back to the van to my room to brush my teeth. Russ's door is wide open, he's spread eagle, just Morning, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like basic instinct. That was actually quite a good impression, that. Time to destroy another African country. Bit far. All right. I'll see you in a bit, bruv. See you in a bit. Good luck. It felt a bit rude, but the road demolition man was here and there was a job to be done. It was nothing personal, but the Cameroonian roads were about to get it. My vicious jackhammer feet took to the road enjoying a new country to stomp on with maximum ferocity. Yeah. Do you know what That's happened dangerous. today, which is terrible news? Yeah. Ran out of that day. F**k, dude. Are you okay? I'm not sure. I don't know if we'll make it. I do have some good news for you. Windscreen is fixed. Yeah. Cost a thousand two hundred bucks. Okay, that's all right. If they were going to fix the whole car, it would have only taken eight thousand. It's not a lot, but it is still a lot, you know. Anyway, so they fixed the windscreen for now, and Grant's going to leave this afternoon. Okay, cool. Yeah. With the windscreen fixed, we could finally roll the 4x4 out. It was currently in Johannesburg, South Africa, and Grant was about to set off on a mission to drive up to us as quickly as possible, passing through Botswana, Namibia, Angola, and the DRC to reach Brazzaville. There he'd pick up our new team member, Jamie, and the two of them would race into Cameroon to meet us. It was good news, but as I got back on the road, the shortage of Perfect Ted hit me hard. I couldn't imagine a life without caffeine and I feared for the future of the mission. We were now in a race against time to get the 4x4 here with a fresh restock to save me right for the brink of death. Why? 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 There's an excessive number of flies that just ended the run. We've got a decent pace on today, I'd say. It's not bad. Pace has been improved recently, to be fair. Yeah, definitely. What's it saying at the moment? Been hanging around about 6.30 6 recently. What's the condition of your mental state at the moment? I'm constantly trying to be zen, but getting interrupted by bullshit. Would you say that's affecting your performance? Anything that affects stress levels affects performance. So yeah, there's a certain level of problem that's kind of fine. Cause it's like, oh, that kind of occupies your mind a bit and, it, and you can solve it. It's not too much of a ball though. And then there's just, when it gets too much, it's like, oh, that's actually really f***ing annoying. Is that where you're at at the moment? Probably, yeah. I mean, four by four, need a new person. You anticipate the problems of the following couple months. Nigeria, border crossing, going to be bullshit. Chopping and changing team, that's going to be annoying. Then a lot of different borders, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever done this type of challenge and documented it to the like frequency and quality of what we're doing. I don't, so I can't, I, I've never seen it. Do you know what I think you might be right? That's quite cool. Yeah. It? The people have done better quality, obviously, but they won't have done it at the frequency that we're doing now. One video every four days is pretty nuts. Yeah. What? It's a calf stretch. Never seen it before. <laughs> I just enjoyed the way you did it. Oh, okay. Have a good day. I had a lot to think about as I headed back out onto the tarmac. 
There were so many moving parts that had to come together in the next few weeks, but I was starting to feel more optimistic that all the bullshit of this particular problem was nearly over. Unfortunately, Cameroon didn't agree. As the boys pulled into the campsite for the night, they received a text from my girlfriend. What's just happened? We've just found our campsite. Why are we leaving it? I just got a message from Emily, Chris's girlfriend, saying SOS. He's in a car at the moment. The boys raced down the road towards my last known location with no idea what the police were up to. I've been picked up on the side of the road and driven to a police stop, but for all they knew, I could be moved at any point. Nelly may have taken a few corners a little fast, but just 10 minutes later, they made it to me. We, we literally told them like, you showed the passport. No, it was another one on the road, maybe getting his car, and drove me here, so I had to go back. Did he give you a reason? No, he's going to send you such a dickhead as well. Go in the car. Well, in French. And he drove me there. He drove me to the police stop and then, like, brought me up to the police station. The guard was like, Yeah, man, I've seen his mates. They showed me his passport. He's from me wasting my time. All right, so it's good luck. A free man once again. I hit the road to finish the last 10k of the day. Excited to get some fuel down me and crawl into bed. As the sun set, I made it to my roadside camp. Long day, eh? Yeah, boy. Thanks to our police friends. Jamie's all sorted, by the way. He's yeah. ready to go, document sorted. So. I've got them quite wet. Do you know what airport he needs to fly from? Yeah. So there's a place called Memmingen. Sounds like they couldn't think of something to name and just went, Yeah, literally. Um, it's Germans being Germans. Germans right? being German in it. You said you got stopped a few times, yeah? Yeah, I did actually. Three times. What were they yeah. saying? A few of them were like, do the whole like, you're, you're on foot, what are you doing? That's weird. And I go, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Nobody can ever believe it. The first guy today made me wait there for 20 minutes and then he started asking me some questions and I was like, you on foot, blah, 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 what are you doing? And I kind of said, look, South Africa and Namibia and Angola, blah, blah, blah. And then I said I was running 60k a day and he was just impressed and then he went, oh, f mm. sweet lad. That's cool. C'est bon. C'est bon. Cameroon day three. Cameroon. Excited to get stopped by more police today. Awesome. So what's the plan to avoid that? Put my passport in my bag. Cool. <laughs> Mate, you, can't, you don't have to sound like you hate yourself. <laughs> Guess what time of day it is, boys. Tell me. Let's find my earphones time. Hey, my favourite section. Okay, so I came in last night. I would have sat down here pretty quickly. That's <laughs> what I normally do, innit? Oh, what's what's the time on the clock? Uh, it's under a minute. Holy under shit. Minute. That was about 52 seconds, yes. What, what does Russ win? That's um, his best time yet. The respect of all of those around him. That's amazing to get something that you've never had before. <laughs> Ooh. You got any goals for today? Run. How far? 60k. Any more? There's no point running further than you end in the next nine days. That is very true. I stretched my legs back out onto the road, feeling tired but less stressed than the day before. Even in Cameroon, we were still deep in the Congo rainforest and I took in the beauty of the place before the sun came to rip all joy out of my life. I hit a solid pace and met the boys at 20k. It's Russell Cook. We've got a new catchphrase. What is it? I looked at what bang bang is in French. Yeah. Clack here, clack here. I just think you should scream that as you run off. I think it's really catchy. Clack here. Clack here. Clacker, clacker. It's a hard disagree from me. All right, bang bang it is. Do you know what is cool as well? Bump. Is that you've never had to get in a vehicle for a border, which yeah. was something that we always said was allowed because we thought it might be necessary, but so far, yeah. it's been everything on foot. What's your message to the world today? What's my message to the world today? I don't know. I think we should have an agony out section with Russ. People yeah, can right. send in their problems and then you can just solve them. What's your problem? I'll solve it. There's this guy that I work with. Yeah. The know, just makes shit jokes all the time. Makes shit jokes. Go with the big boy approach and you just fing smack him right in the face. Cool. No. <laughs> I actually thought and... you were very the rust <laughs> <laughs> Did the shit jokes bit not give it away? No, I wasn't listening to you. Cool, thanks, Agony Ant. I'll go and do that. I'm gonna fing off now. Oi, oi, oi. As Stan knocked Jared clean out, that definitely didn't happen. <laughs> Stan must have written this. As Stan knocked Jared clean out, 
No trouble. Yeah, all right, lad. <laughs> do I let Do I let Stan make his sh joke? As Jared choked Stan out like a little weasel, I powered back onto the tarmac. I was really enjoying my time in Cameroon so far. The people had been nothing but friendly, the roads were pristine, and the forest was beautiful. It had got nice and hot, and it all made for the perfect holiday. There was only one complication, another 60K to run. Yeah. Sorry, Gus is walking around that village with a camera shooting somewhere. Oh, cool. <laughs> Coming in. He's got a camera out. No one's going to take our jobs. Mm. Can I get a weather report off you? Got to I your got to 38 then. The heat and humidity, you can beat me. Game. Look at me, I'm ferocious. I like how that was your last bit of energy and then you were just like, <laughs> yeah, then you nope. just passed out. <laughs> <laughs> right, Gus has returned from his escapades. What did you guys see, Gus? So I went to uh, the village chief's farm. He showed me his banana trees, his orange trees, his cacao trees, even like at least 10 types of fruit trees I didn't, don't know the no name of. Told me about his daily problems. Pygmies are, uh, uh, live a little bit more traditionally than uh, the Bantus normally. So that means they're usually a little bit more far in the forest. They live a lot more primitively. Their houses are a little bit smaller. They usually live a little bit more like nomads. So their house constructions are usually like a normal pygmy house takes just 20 minutes to build. Everybody needs money in this society or like it's handy at least. So they also come often towards the Bantus and uh, try to get some work, but it will be like lower paid than other people they will do the lower paid work. It's interesting how one group will always, almost always take Dominate um, over another. domination yeah, yeah. over another yeah. group. Check yourself out in the mirror. It's not very good mirror, is it? Shame. Can't see much. Do you want me to I do? think I need to see much anyway. <laughs> it's not a very good sight, is it? I was knackered this afternoon. The heat of the last few weeks was getting to me more and more every day, but there was nothing to be done. I am Ginger and I accepted my fate. Tarmac had to be obliterated and there was only one man for the job. The boys found a beautiful village who kindly let us stay for the night. But as it turned out, this ordinary looking set of houses was home to an extraordinary woman. Could you ask her name? I'm Bam, Jan. Uh, je m'appelle Stan, enchanté. So, what is she doing here? She's a farmer. She plants cacao, banana, manioc, maize. Mm. All of the children around here, are they her children? My real children, they are at Yerunde. They're working over there. But these are my picnic children. It's normally a tribe that is looked down a lot, that's discriminated a lot, a lot against, don't have access to education, no access access to healthcare, no access to modern technology, but here the pygmies are living and working with her, they're going to school, they have electricity, they have a television even to look at. So she needs help with the work uh, and she prefers to live with pygmies over her own ethnicity. Does she feel as though she's doing an act of kindness? Does that is that something that motivates her? Aside from like bringing food on the table, she also tries to bring them up to the, the standard of, of the Bantus because she really also wants to do something good. Her goal is it to bring up the pygmies to the Bantu standard. That's her real dream to, uh, to see that her that her get equality. Um, could you just say it like translate from me though? I think she is doing an amazing thing and is an amazing person and just say thank you. Il veut dire, il veut que je te dire, il pense euh, vous êtes une femme incroyable. Mm -hmm. Tu fais le travail trop bien. Mm -hmm. Bon, ça... merci, merci. So welcome to the camp for tonight. Yeah, what's this then? We just had a chat with a lady on camera. Yeah. She's doing some genuinely amazing stuff here. Yeah. Where normally people will almost use pygmies as slaves. Yeah. She treats them as their children. She brings them to school. Oh, wow. They work for her, but she get, builds them good accommodation. Yeah. They have solar power, they have television, education, healthcare. Oh, wow. That's 
I never ever heard this in my life. Really? Take me. Yeah. Even buying a motorbike so so she so they can learn driving. Yeah, yeah. So is it all they all pick me then? Huh? All except her. Yeah. yeah. And she said that her ultimate goal is to make everyone equal. It's pretty incredible. Good morning, sir. Morning, morning. How we doing? How we feeling? How was the sleep? Isn't that that's like all three of the questions Stan said no more? It's perfect. We're not allowed to ask. I told him as well. Like that's how I use it to warm you up. That like, doesn't warm me up. Well, I get you talking. Yes, he's saying. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling? All right. Yeah. All right. What happened last night? A chicken decides to wake up at 3 a.m. Shout the entire village down. Did you hear it? I heard some other noises last night. First, I thought my power socket was surging because it started off as like a. That was a noise I heard last night at about 2 a.m. Thoughts on the campsite tonight, last night? Yeah, decent. I'm a fan of this uh, pygmy stuff because that door was really small and I had to bend in to get it, get for it and for like a Bet you feel right at home here. Go on, little boy. Here you go. That bastard chicken had robbed me of my eight hours sleep and I was feeling it. The first 20K was a bit of a slog, up and down brutal rolling hills, and I was starting to get hungry, but I knew I had a secret weapon back at the van. I've saved this chocolate bar for a long time. Tell me about it. It is a new bar that Huel is making. It's got 26 vitamins and minerals, like every other Huel product, in the form of a chocolate bar. What a win. Big win. 20 grams of protein, I think it is. And I've kept it in my top bunk, so it's melted a little bit. Well, taste bunk, can't lie. Give me a snack review in depth. So, it's very chocolatey, but the caramel really do be hitting well. And we've got the peanuts coming through as well. Normally, protein bars taste pretty wank, but this is excellent. It has melted a bit because it's been in my bunk. It's been 38 degrees out here. I can tell you're enjoying something when you suck the package in. Is it also vegan? Yeah. Wow. Wild. So yeah, you can buy these from Fuel and get £10 off with the code HARDEST10. Nice. How are you finding Cameroon so far? Now you've had a chance to settle in a bit. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's pretty similar to Congo, I, but it does feel a bit more developed, doesn't it? No, it's been really pleasant so far. What were your expectations of Cameroon? Sam? I don't know, I didn't know what to expect, but like, so this is before we even set foot on African soil, but like every everything that happened in the logistics meetings, all of the security briefings and crap from, you know, a bunch of white people, basically. It hypes you up to believe that things are a lot worse and more barbaric than they actually are. And I think that's like a, quite a common view of Africa from the, from the West. I yeah. think it's it's like taking the time to be here is less about learning how much like making sure you know everything about them and more about showing yourself how little you actually know and learning understanding from that and just the understanding as well that any like blanket opinion on an entire continent it can never be complicated enough to be true yeah. in its entirety having a blanket opinion on stan though is pretty easy it's very one-sided i'm just quite a simple man simple man so. just, a, just an ordinary man <laughs> What have we just been doing in our break? Solved world world issues. Yeah, yeah. Some great debates. We've solved it all. Fuck yeah, it. Solved. Just, just like bash. Solved. Let's go on. Bash. Done. That hat hitting the ground. That was the moment the world was at peace. Solved. Russ Cook for PM. What do we reckon? Oh no. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> I don't know what party I would be to be fair. Probably have to start my own. So yeah, you would have to start your own. There's no party that would take you. These five. I feel like that might be a bit exclusionary. Yeah, we've kind of just. Um, ignored the entire female population. I'll have a rethink. Right, get on road. On and road! Think, and think about your manifesto. Or don't, actually, it's probably for My the best. manifesto. No. It... <laughs> All righty. Show me your emotion about the rain. <laughs> Having taken my audition photos for Strictly Come Dancing, I ploughed on up the road. I was well excited to have finally solved all the world's problems, but there's no rest for the wicked and there was still work to be done. 
Even being the Earth saviour wasn't going to stop me pressing on to Tunisia. It's got f***ing all out there again, though. Yeah, it has. Keeps doing that. It's quite irritating, I yeah. think. That's the face of oh, a satisfied yeah. human being. <laughs> if you could have any single food item right in this moment, what would it be? Uh, it's hard to look past the Domino's pizza, mate. Mm. That is a recurring answer. Ask the same question, you get the same answer. If you could have Fair a point. drink, though. Perfect, Ted. Hey. I wonder what, what it would be if you added up all your hours of running since you started. I've got to be, I've got to be past that 10,000 hour threshold. So, so they say 10,000 hours, become an expert in anything. Mate, a lot of things aren't really that complicated. If you want to get good at something, you just have to spend a f***ing lot of time doing it. Mm. It, like that 10,000 hour rule is a pretty good rule. Right, I agree. Imagine spending 10,000 hours so I can still be a shit at it. That would be quite impressive, <laughs> to be fair. Well, my ex-karate coach always used to say to me, um, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Otherwise, you're wasting your time and practicing nonsense. Yeah, that's true. That so, is good advice as well, to be fair. Yeah. Let's right. get you on road. Yes, don't move. Remember, you're going that way, huh? I'm not no, I mean, you get out the van, it's normally facing the way you run. I mean, like the other day, I just got out the van and walked the way the van was pointing and he was running the opposite direction. Big Dumbo. me, he's built off. Right. A little bit too up. Hello. Hello. What up? That was odd. I pushed on for my 10,000 and first hour, smashing tarmac like I was born for it. My ones and twos hit the road like anvils, sending cracks ricocheting through the trembling African tarmac network all the way to Tunisia. I still had a way to go, but I had to let the finish line know I was coming. He's back. How's it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, all right. See? Ask a question, get a answer. How's the running? No. Um, <laughs> Who wants to guess the elevation? It's like a... But can I give it a zone, like a smallish zone? No. Uh, Just guess. Let's see who's closest. Stan, I'm going to go 680. 818. Woo! Man. Nice. They were quite rolling though, no? Yeah. That's... Like, it catches you off guard, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah last week, there was 4,255 metres of elevation, which is nearly half of Everest in a week. We drove to a small hotel in the nearby town. I ate a delicious spaghetti omelette and settled down for the night. But little did I know, there was something violent and brown brewing inside me. Russ, lad, it's seven o'clock. What are you doing in bed? Just putting myself a lot. I won't lie to you, it's actually quite unpleasant to be in this room. Fucking stinks. Yeah, I literally just got off the top of it, so that's a fresh one in there. Fresh whatever you ate last night. I ate a couple of minutes. Mmm. Fuck. Yeah. I reckon it will pass through. No, I'll be alright. I hope so, man. Bless you. Best of luck. Light out. I spent the next few hours at the hotel trying and failing to recover. After ruining the plumbing in my room and having three naps, I was still struggling every time I stood up. But by 2 p.m., I was itching to get back on the tarmac and decided to hit a steady 5k. And for some reason, I picked white shorts. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. And we're looking for something to shit on. Just put a bit of putting, like, putting a lot. Doing a lot of putting. Ate an omelette, which came in a plastic bag. It actually tasted all right at the time. So yeah, it's just been violently pooing sideways. How are you what... feeling now though? Like, is it the tummy settled slightly or are you still feeling the pooing? No, no, it's rumbling about. Is it? Yeah. But I thought, you know what? Like. Sometimes you just got to take the chance, and you? Mm -hmm. Like, if I pull myself, I pull myself. Good luck. Bang, bang. We'll be waiting for you with the modium. I stretched back out onto the open tarmac, taking in the scenery, and hang on, I need a sh Man started within a K, just stopped. We stopped, and not even within a K, it's like literally, there's the starting point. It's 200 meters. <laughs> <laughs> and you had to smuggle your bog roll. <laughs> You're doing great today, aren't you? <laughs> bang, bang. Good luck. Don't shit yourself. This stretch of running was gruelling. I was leaking from everywhere, barely making it to 500 metres at a time without having to stop and drop some of my many children off at the pool. I was moving incredibly slowly and feeling rough, but eventually I made it to 5k and collapsed. That is the face of a defeated man. <laughs> How are we feeling? <laughs> uh. 
You got some shot running down the back of your leg. You want to lie down a bit? Yeah, probably. I was uh, sick a couple of times. I got the second chunny on. Uh, on oh, you got a you got a shot of it. Yeah. Ooh. I could feel the sick coming. I was like, good time. I tried it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so grim. Oh, Stan. I don't know if you should put that in or we should put that on Patreon. I think that's a Patreon post. Let's get Gus's live reaction. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a lot of volume. Okay. I think go lie down. We'll chat to you later, bro. Yeah. I hope you feel better. We decided to stay in the same hotel for another night to give me some access to the plumbing. Out of nowhere, we bumped into Libby, an American living in the town we were staying in. The boys headed out to get a drink and experience the best of the Cameroonian nightlife. We're in Texas and we have a Guinness logo on the board. <laughs> Meanwhile, I stayed in my room, curled up in a ball, hoping and praying that the food poisoning nightmares of the past wouldn't repeat themselves. Only time would tell. In the next episode, storms strike again, Jared goes away, and my illness gets worse. <laughs>